threatens to bring down the NHS and, is, and the country is sleepwalking into a crisis. This according to the charity Diabetes UK. It's published figures which show that more than 3 million people in the UK are being treated for the disease, an increase of 60% in the past 10 years. The charity predicts that if current trends continue, 5 million people will have diabetes by 2025. The vast majority of those who have diabetes 2, type 2, often linked to obesity. Well, joining me now is Barbara Young, who's the Chief Executive of Diabetes UK. And in North London, via webcam, is Raga De Silva, who has type 2 diabetes. Now, Raga lost her mother to diabetes after she was diagnosed herself, and she was told she only had three years to live. Raga's now set up a support group for people living with the condition. Good morning to you both. Thank you for joining us. Um, morning. Barbara, morning. the figures that have come out today, they're pretty shocking. What's the problem? Is it more people are susceptible to diabetes or is it better diagnosis? It's a real crisis and it's um, partly better diagnosis but we've always counted uh, the number of cases we thought were undiagnosed as well um, and so this is a real rise and it's um, not uh, stopping in any way and it's got two problems. One is the number of people getting diabetes, type 2 particularly, um, which is preventable and avoidable. Um, as opposed to type 1, which of course is not lifestyle related and can't be. Uh, and that huge increase is not only meaning that more people are suffering from the condition, but also more people are living with uh, complications, developing complications, because they're not getting proper care. And that's the thing that's going to sink the NHS. Let's talk to Raga. Um, Raga, you've got a um, very interesting story. Your, your mother was diagnosed with diabetes. Um, what happened to her? My mother's uh, had a type 2 diabetes condition for a long time and uh, she didn't know about it either. She was in India at that time and uh, she passed away in October 2013 with, you know, various uh, organ failure basically from complications of diabetes type 2. So she had just lived with diabetes without knowing it at all? Th that's correct. And then you discovered that you had diabetes. What happened to you? Well, I, I was, uh, I, I got really ill. One, one morning I woke up with really blurred vision. I went to the doctors and I was given really a death sentence that day. They said to me that my, I had severe uh, liver problem and I had severe kidney ailment and my gallbladder was basically not functioning very well. I had a huge stone. And, and they said it was all related to diabetes uh, type 2. And I was told I wouldn't uh, you know, be there for in the next three years if I continued with the poor lifestyle that I was then leading. So you'd been given no indication up until then, until symptoms started to show that you were susceptible to diabetes at all? No, no, because I, there's, I mean, there's no awareness. I mean, where do you read about it unless you're really looking for some information? Barbara, that's an interesting point, the awareness of diabetes. Absolutely, and one of the things we try to do is to make people aware of the risks, particularly if you've got diabetes in the family, uh, if you're from an Asian or black African uh, origin, uh, if you're too heavy and you're particularly carrying weight around your waist. Um, and so all of those risk factors um, should be looked at. There's a risk score you can do on our website, diabetes.org.uk. Uh, uh, and uh, that's really important so that people can avoid developing diabetes. And we're delighted the government's put a diabetes prevention program in place. But the more important thing in terms of an immediate solution to the pressures on the NHS is that the 4 million people who are out there with diabetes at the moment, so that's three and a bit million diagnosed and about 600,000 who don't know they've got it, um, need to be properly looked after, they need to have proper standards of care uh, and they need to be given help to uh, adjust their lifestyle and stick with their medication uh, and get all their requisite health checks so that we don't have them developing these severe complications which are heartbreaking for them and cost the NHS lots of money and put huge pressure on hospitals and GPs. How do you take a step back from that though before the NHS bears the burden of the cost of treating someone who has symptoms about sorting out awareness so that it doesn't get to that point? How do you fix that? The government has a thing called the National Health Service Health Check which everybody between the ages of 40 and 75 should get every five years but alas only about half the people who should be getting it are yet getting it and that's our message both in terms of prevention and in terms of care and that is this crisis is now so severe and threatening the health service that we really need government to be more directive, both in terms of their prevention programmes and in terms of their care programmes. They can't just leave it to local health services to perhaps do a good job and perhaps not do a good job. Everybody right across the country needs good prevention, 
good risk assessment and good care. Raga, you mentioned that you had an un unhealthy lifestyle. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and perhaps why you hadn't tackled that before being told that you had diabetes? So, so we all think that's not going to happen to us. That's the first thing. And um, I had, from being very slim, I had turned into a 14 stone, big, heavy woman. And uh, when I got diagnosed with diabetes type 2 and I got so scared, you know, I, I went into a deep hole. I, I read up a lot of information, by the way, on Diabetes UK, which was my biggest, biggest source of uh, knowledge at that time. And uh, I decided the first thing I needed to do is to probably check some weight. And I dropped a few dress sizes from being about 14 stone, I uh, was about eight and a half, nine stone. And that had a very uh, direct impact on my health. My diabetes went into remission. It also had a huge impact on me emotionally as a person. And, and that's the reason I, you know, I went on a personal mission to set up a group called Use It to Lose It, which helps and supports women similar to you know, uh, me, uh, middle-aged women and uh, women who are susceptible to having a poor lifestyle to take charge of their lives and to you know, prevent uh, this from happening to them and their families. And how receptive do you think people are, Raga, when it comes to changing their lifestyle? Because as you, you said, you had an unhealthy lifestyle, you didn't change, you, you must have known that you were heavier than perhaps you should have been, but you hadn't embraced the need to make that change until this diagnosis. And there are lots of other people out there who will think, well, I'm fine, I'm getting away with it, perhaps. See, sometimes things happen to you and you make a change, and sometimes you see other people going through it and you make a change. So what I'm doing is I'm sh showcasing my story as a, as a reason for people to change. And people are opening up. You know, I have 270 members, very active members in the group. And people are, it's not easy at all. It's very, very hard to make a change. And we, we falter, you know, sometimes we fall 100 times. But we get up and we keep making the change because it is important. It is for us. Barbara, I mean, you've mentioned the NHS, the, the cost this is going to have for the NHS, words such as crippling, a death sentence for the NHS. I mean, it's very easy to apply phrases like this to almost scaremonger. How realistic is this, or how, how much of a reality is this, that the NHS is going to fall under this pressure? Let me give you two statistics. One is 10% of the total budget of the NHS is now spent on treating diabetes. That's huge. Uh, and so anything we can do to that to spend it more effectively is big. And uh, that means spending that on the early stages of a condition to help people do exactly what Raga said, rather than develop complications later in life. But the other statistic really is that one in five patients in a hospital bed has now got diabetes. These, these people stay longer because of their complication of having diabetes. And as a result, um, they are part of the reason why we're seeing huge pressure on GP surgeries, on accident emergency departments, on hospital beds, mm. and on prescribing costs. And it's avoidable, you know, type two diabetes can be prevented and it can be uh, managed to be a condition that people can live with in a comparatively healthy way for the whole of their lives, not having to rely intensely on the health service. And so we really do need government to wake up and smell the coffee and decide that improving the standards of care for people with diabetes is long overdue. It's not just in the interest of these people, it's in the interest of the NHS as a whole. Barbara Young from Diabetes UK, thank you very much. And Raga De Silva, thank you very much for telling us your story. Thank you. Thank you.